I'm gonna show you how to run YOLO V8 in under 20 lines of code. Now, not only will you be able to run YOLO V8, but you'll also be able to run YOLO V7, YOLO V6, YOLO R, X, and beyond. You just change one flag in your code and you'll be able to adapt to any future versions of YOLO, which is super cool. If you go into github.com, augmented startups, AS1, right? And this is essentially a modular library for all YOLO object detection and tracking algorithms. And this means that you can use it for detection and tracking. So looking over here, we are able to use DeepSort, PyTrack, and Norfair. So say for example, you want to use YOLO v5, but you only want to use it with Norfair. But later down the line, you decide, oh no, I don't want to use YOLO v5. Maybe let me use, test out YOLO v6. Then maybe you can say, okay, let's have YOLO v6 nano with Norfair. But then you realize later on that you don't like Norfair and maybe you want to go back to DeepSort. And you can do this all by changing a single line of code in your project. And if you scroll all the way down, you can use YOLO v8 right off the bat. So let me give you a typical scenario of why you'd need this. Because say for example, you are using YOLO V8, right? And you built your whole project on it and you know, things are working really great. But all of a sudden someone comes up with the next version of YOLO, which is YOLO V9, which is so much better than YOLO V8. Then you will be like, oh damn, I need to change my whole project code just to accommodate the next version of YOLO. Not with this library because if next version of YOLO comes out, you just need to change a single line of code, as I've mentioned earlier. So you change this from YOLO v8 to YOLO v9 or YOLO v10, whatever future version of YOLO comes out, and instantly you would be able to continue with your project and, and you don't have to change anything else. Isn't that so cool? Isn't that so cool? Right, so let's get started with it. Let me show you how it's done. So we're gonna go into AS1, make sure you have a folder. So this is on your PC. You can create a nice folder, I call it YOLO. Now I'm going to open up my command prompt, CMD. Right, and now what we're gonna do, we're gonna scroll down here to the instructions and we're gonna git clone this repository. So now we are cloning the AS1 repository, right? As you can see, the installation is super simple. Right, now we've got that, we're gonna create an environment, a new virtual environment. So let's place this over here. And while that is there, let's move this side by side with this. Right, now we've created the environment. Now we can activate our environment with this. Cool. Now we know that our environment has been activated because we have this .env over there. Next, we're gonna install Scython. Cool, so everything worked out perfectly and if it prompts you to upgrade, and now you can copy this thing right over here, Control C, Control V, and you can upgrade both. Now it's not completely necessary. I don't know, I don't like seeing these yellow warnings over here, so I decided, okay, let me do it. And then while that is getting ready, let's go over here and copy this thing over here. So this is Scython B-Box. So that's the bounding box for that we're gonna use with Scython. Okay, so we're gonna copy that, paste it over here, and enter. Cool, now that has been completed. Next, we're gonna pop install AS1. So we're gonna copy that, paste it over here, and enter. Now this will install all of the libraries that you need in order to run AS1. So while AS1 is installing, the next step that we're gonna do is to install Torch Vision. Now, if you don't have a GPU, you're gonna use this command over here so that you can run it on CPU. But I highly recommend that you install it on a GPU because you'll get real-time performance on AS1. Not only that, but for any computer vision algorithm, it will always run faster and in real time on GPU rather than on CPU. Cool, now that we have AS1 installed, I'm gonna copy this one over here for GPU. Copy that, paste it over here, and let's run it. So Torch Vision has been installed. Now is the moment of truth. Let's see if everything works. Now, don't forget that we need to CD into AS1. So that's over there. Okay, if we go into our YOLO folder, we'll see that we have AS1 over here. Now, I made a mistake right over here. This end is supposed to be inside here. But let's copy all of this, cut it out, and put it right over here. Okay, normally you would first have to change directory and then run all of the installation instructions. So keep that in mind. Cool. But it's not a train smash. Let's see if we can run our video. So that's Python main.py data sample videos test.mp4. So let's run it and see if everything works. So I made another mistake again. So I need to go out of it. So change directory back into the previous directory and let's run it again. Okay, cross fingers, cross fingers. Let's hope it works. 
So right now it's downloading the Yolo V7 model. We'll change it to Yolo V8 in just a minute, but let's see what happens. Look at that, it works. And not only do we have Yolo V7 working, it's also working alongside a tracker. Now let's find out which tracker we are using exactly. So I'm just going to control C out of this. We're going to go into our YOLO folder that we had earlier, right? And we can delete this one here, this AS1, the mistake that we made. Now what has happened is that when we ran the, the code, it downloaded all of the stuff that we needed for YOLO v7 to run. Now I'm going to go into main.py, right? Let's open it up. And then while we are here and waiting for it, we are also going to go into benchmarks. And this is where we're going to get the flag that we need for YOLO v8. So now we have main.py and as you can see, we have our detector over here, we have our tracker. So I'm going to change YOLO v7 PyTorch. Let's choose something like YOLO v8 medium and we're going to choose the Onyx model, right? Let's just select that and paste it over there. Let's save it and let's run it again. So I'm going to say Python main.py, everything is just the same and we're going to test it on the same video. Now, if you want to change the video, you can go over here to data sample videos and we've got a wide variety of videos that we can use right off the bat. So as you can see right now it's downloading the Yolo V8 media model and it's running. Look at that. It's working really well. There is a false positive which is this one over here. We didn't see that in Yolo V7 but for some reason it's picking up in Yolo V8. Now we can adjust the confidence threshold to filter out some of these false detections but also you can play around with the larger models which will give you better accuracy. Now before we go, I want to show you how we can swap out ByTrack Object Tracker with something else. Let's change it to NoFair. So we're going to try out model flag NoFair. We're going to put that over here, paste that there, and let's run it again. Python main.py data sample videos test.mp4. We've got our tracker running, everything looks hunky-dory. And yeah, look at that, it's running quite, quite nicely. Now just note that it is running a bit slower on my system because I am simultaneously recording this video and also we are running uh, object tracker in conjunction. So no it will run between 12 to 15 frames a second. Cool, so once you have this up and running and you've played around with the different YOLO models, what you can do now is to head over to store.augmentedstartups.com and here you'll find a wide variety of projects that you can try out for yourself. So right now we are adapting all of the YOLO projects to be AS1 compatible. So you can run real-time read detection in under 30 lines of code. You can run mass detection in maybe 20 lines of code and so on and so forth. Traffic light detection, maybe we could do that in 50 lines of code. Apple center stage, that will also be another one that we'll be converting. So you'll be able to run traffic detection with color recognition using YOLO V7, V8, R and so on and so forth. Isn't that really cool? One library for all your project needs. We will be updating this very soon, so make sure that you stay tuned to augmentedstartups.com and we'll be bringing you all of these projects very, very soon. Now, I know I said that we will do this in under 20 lines of code and right now it's showing under 50 lines of code. But I mean, look at this, this is very minimal lines of code. Like, if we take this out, like we don't really need our arguments. We can condense this into one line. We can condense this one also to one line. And if we take all of this out, we will definitely get to under 20 lines of code. Isn't that amazing? And one more thing, if you want to run this in Google Colab, then there will be a link to the video right up here.